Now, before she does the second song of the group of two, I'm going to do the first piece of uh, Blitzstein, or part of the first piece of Blitzstein that I finished. This is an excerpt from an opera that he was writing based on a story by Bernard Malamud. The story is called Gideon's First. And the song in the middle of the opera uh, is a story song told by the main character, Mendel, to the title character, his retarded son, or now we say challenged son of 35 with a minor of a three-year-old. Um, and he is telling this story to try to assuage his fear and to get his son not to fear the journey that he's about to send him on because he knows he's dying. And he's trying to send him to his Uncle Leo in California, and he doesn't have the money, but somehow he's going to find the money, and by the end he does. Um, but this, this song is called How I Met My New Grandfather. It's, it's actually autobiographical on Blitzstein's part, it's, because he talks about how his grandmother remarried this man and how he was scared as a child. Um, this song was premiered at the Mark Blitzstein Memorial Concert in April 1964, with an orchestra conducted by Leonard Bernstein, and the soloist was Jose Ferrer. Uh -huh. Harold Schoenberg of the New York Times wrote that Mr. Ferrer sang with a Yiddish accent that would have made a row of blintzes stand up. <laughs> <laughs> I conferred with Ferrer about this later, and he said, you know, at first I thought it was an insult, and then I realized it was a compliment. <laughs> 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 um, this is the only piece by Blitzstein that has been translated into Yiddish, and we've performed it in Florida. Um, there are at least two dozen songs of his that have been translated to Hebrew and have performed, have performed in Tel Aviv. But the whole opera is in a kind of Yinglish of Malamud and Blitzstein, and it really should be translated into Yiddish and done. It's had four productions uh, at uh, Cornell, where it was my master's thesis, and uh, then at Indiana, where I studied opera conducting. Then the Bel Canto Opera Company did it uh, and won the most, uh, the award for most important event of the season of, of Broadway Opera in 1978. And then finally in 1992 it got its orchestral premiere with the Center for Contemporary Opera. Helene uh, was in that production. And this is the, the, the song, as I say, that, that, that Bernstein premiered at that Bernstein Memorial Concert. And he promised at that time, he told the New York Times, he told the audience he was going to finish the opera. And I'll tell you in a moment why he didn't, but this is the, the piece that um, was really uh, one of the reasons that I became uh, interested in this I give him. So here we are. Mendel is telling the story to Itzhak, and it's really a duet. I'm going to sing two parts, four parts to go. First, Itzhak. Story. How I met my new grandfather. Story. I, I was maybe nine years old. That my other Baba got married again. Came one day, she said to me, I should meet him. I go up the steps, boy, my heart was knocking. My grandmama opened the door. She was little, not bigger than me. Come, she said, he waits for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dark is down the hall and long. And there he sits in the kitchen way back, not a move, the face is still, it sits there, fierce the nose and fierce the mustache, fierce eyebrows too, this bandit my grandmother wed, then she pushed me on him, then she said, here he is, your grandson Mendel, oh yeah, 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 yeah. such a fear, kinder, what a thing, such a fear, you could die from only fear. Now when me my heart is stopped. He took a whole day before he turned around, glared on me and spoke. Do you smoke? I was now so scared that I could not dare to lie. I yo, I nod the head. And he held out a big hairy hand. Then he said, Give me 
Bier-Sigaretto. Such a fear, Kinder, what oh, a thing is such a fear. It's a, you know, you don't smoke. <laughs> so, when I, when I perform that piece for the audiences, I say, so you see, I had to finish the opera. <laughs> um, now, why didn't Bernstein finish the opera? He, he said he was going to, and then months later he wrote that uh, no one that he knew had access to those secret caves and blah, 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 blah. Why didn't he finish it? Well, I didn't know why until long after Bernstein's death. Jana Malamud published her memoirs and revealed that at that concert where Bernstein spoke of Malamud for the first and last time, Malamud came backstage to congratulate him. And according to Jana, Bernstein asked Malamud to go to bed with him. <laughs> And Malamud didn't tell anybody this except his daughter and his wife, but he was shocked. And yeah. you can imagine how he re reacted. Yeah. And that reaction probably soured Bernstein on Malamud for good. Because when I talked to Bernstein, I, I first played the, the piece for, well, I, I was telling Jeff Bryan earlier that, that I met Bernstein at Harvard, and when I asked him about completing the, the, the unfinished work, he, took, he said, you really want to finish it? I said, I'm going to try. He took me in his arms and said, God bless you. <laughs> I felt as though I was anointed. Mm -hmm. And then three years later, I finally finished it, and I played it for Ellie Siegmeister, who was my teacher who had first acquainted me with Blitzstein's work, and then for, um, for uh, Bernard Malamud and his wife, I played it for them. And uh, they wanted uh, Bert's well, and I, and I played it for the, the, the Blitzstein estate, his, his, his uh, uh, sister and nephew. And uh, they, they, wanted, they all wanted Bernstein to hear it. So when I finally brought it to Bernstein, there were certain things that I, in this particular song particularly that, that um, Malin was uh, objected to and that we changed. I said, well, it's the English. He said, it's not my English. So we changed it. Um, we changed a couple of words. And when I showed it to Bernstein, and I said, Malin would want this. He said, oh, well, yeah, OK. I guess Malin's opinion is important on this. So. <laughs> Only later did I realize the significance of this. Um, so that's what happened, and um, there have been many uh, performances of Blitzstein's works, um, and Bernstein was, was, was actually very helpful to us in, in uh, uh, getting people interested in, in his first. But most of the, of the performers and recordings of Blitzstein that did not involve me have not involved Malamut. Um, and, and we think that's why. We're not sure. I mean, it's not, it's not to do with quality, because the, the Malamut opera is really what Ned Roram, who, for whom Woodstein played th through the, the, the opera, said that this was Woodstein's best work. And uh, The Cradle of Rock is a masterpiece, and Regina is one of the great American operas. The Idiot's First really is up there with it. And of course, what was Woodstein's magnum opus? Sacco and Vanzetti. In fact, Brenda Lewis, who made her name as Bertie and then Regina in Regina, and Lizzie Borden, and Jack, Jack Beeson, told me Mark was working on Sacro and Vizzetti at her home, and she said everything Mark ever wrote, everything, the Cradle Rock, Regina, everything, was only prelude to Sacro and Vizzetti. So we're going to get to that later.